All right, guys, welcome. Um, for those of you that I haven't met or connected with before, my name is Alicia Smith. I'm the Learning and Development Manager at Australian Fitness Network. So my role is essentially overseeing uh, the program development for Filex. We go through hundreds and hundreds of applications uh, every year to put Filex together. So uh, this is the first time we've done this webinar, so really keen to see if this adds value and helps you guys um, to put together successful applications and also just makes the process a bit easier for you. So what I'm gonna do is just pull up a PowerPoint and we'll run through that first of all, and then any questions that you have, feel free to hold them to the end and then we'll pop them into the chat box. Um, and if it's something that's a bit more detailed, I can actually invite you up on screen uh, so that everyone else can see you as well. But essentially I'm gonna run through the process from beginning to end. Um, keeping in mind that I'm not going to show you the actual software system that we'll be using. I'm just telling you more about what we're looking for, the types of submissions, the things that you need to provide, uh, and hopefully that will, will make the process easier for you. So let me just pull up the PowerPoint that we're going to use. Let's see, screen share, there we go, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. Here we go, oh, there's too many of me. Not doing a very good job of this. All right, so I'll just get rid of me for the time being and you can just see what's going on here. Okay, so first of all, um, the... Filex presenter applications are going to be open from the 1st of June. So now's your time to start to think about what you want to submit. Um, I will go through the other key dates on the next slide, but essentially what we're going to cover this afternoon are the key dates, what we're looking for from applicants, how to put your application together and what components will need you to submit, areas like sponsorship and remuneration. So what you can expect to be paid as a presenter is something that we get off, that we get asked quite often. And then how could you potentially connect your brand um, to, your, to your sessions as well? Outcomes and notifications. So what you can expect to hear from us and when, and then we're gonna look at the Q and A from there. Okay, so the important dates, the applications will open on June the 1st, 2017 or thereabouts. We're working with our event management company who are called the Association Specialists to put together a new system. So for anyone that's been used to submitting your application in a certain way over the past few years, you'll notice that it will be slightly different in terms of uh, the appearance, the look and feel of the, of the portal, but essentially it should hopefully make it a lot easier. We're sort of streamlining the application so that we can get the most information from you at this point to make it easier for both you and for us as we get through the application process. We will notify all applicants by the end of October, whether you've been successful or unsuccessful. Uh, and then the program will be released by early December. And then of course the important date to know is when Filex is on. So 20th to 22nd of April, and then any pre-convention workshops that we run will typically commence on the 19th. All right, so what we're looking for. So we're wanting people that are polished, professional and prepared. We understand that if this is your first time presenting at Filex, that you're not going to necessarily have to be uh, an expert speaker, but we are looking to see that you've done your homework and that you have put the time in to be really prepared. Um, this means from the point of your application all the way through the process, uh, right up until the event and then of course on site. We're looking for sessions and presenters that are unique but relevant. If we've seen the same topic come across our table a hundred times in the application process, it does make you a lot harder to stand out. Uh, but obviously we do need topic areas that are relevant to, who our, to who's coming to our delegates and relevant to, to the kind of work that they're doing in the fitness industry. Um, be an expert or at the very least be experienced in your field. What I guess why we kind of want to cover this is to say that you could be a phenomenal speaker, you could be a phenomenal personal trainer, but we need to know that you're the right person to be delivering the content that you're going to be putting forward for your presentation. We're not suggesting that you have to be the best person in the world at this particular area, but you should definitely be experienced in the field. We do get hundreds of applications, as I mentioned before. So that means that we need you to stand out and stand out for the right reasons. So the right reasons are having a concept, 
that is a little bit different or something that's really well thought out and then we can see that in the content that you submit to us in your application that it's well structured and that you spent some time really putting it together. We can tell if you don't know what your session's gonna be about. Even though the session description doesn't need to be super detailed, and we'll get to that in a minute, if we can see that your session description is incredibly vague and doesn't really tell us what a delegate will come away understanding, knowing, or being able to do, then it tells us that perhaps you haven't really put too much time into putting the application together. A couple of things that we need you to make sure you don't do. Please don't tell us that you can just present on anything and ask us to tell you what we'd like you to present. We need you to come to us and say, these are the sessions that I have available and here are the things that I'm gonna be best, um, best representing or doing. It's also important that you don't submit a session on a branded program that you're not an official representative of. So for instance, if you are putting forward a TRX session or a BOSU session, you should be an official master trainer for either of those programs. A couple of reasons. First of all, any session that comes to us that's a branded session, we're gonna run it past the company to check that you are a representative. So it's just gonna save you time and save us time if we know that you've already cleared that check. And secondly, if there is, say, a program creator, like let's say that for Animal Flow, we have Mike Fitch coming out, then we're probably not gonna be able to select someone else to do an Animal Flow session if we know that we've got, you know, someone that is really at the top of that program coming out to do those sessions. And the final thing that we need you to make sure you don't do is ignore the requirements of the application. Uh, firstly, there'll be components that you just won't be able to progress past if you, um, don't submit them. But secondly, if you ignore the requirements, then we're probably going to ignore your application. And I know that might sound really harsh, but the truth is with the hundreds and hundreds of applications that cross our desk, we do need to make sure that we have everything submitted so that we can make the selection process as streamlined and effective and efficient for us as possible. Next up, things to prepare for your submission. So for all submissions, whether you're submitting one session or 10 sessions, these are the things that we're gonna to need to see from you. We're gonna need a bio. This should just be about 70 words. And a couple of things to consider here is that the bio is gonna be used in marketing. So it will probably appear, will appear on the website. It might appear in some print material somewhere. And it also might be given to your room host who will do your introduction before each session at the event. Your bio should be about 70 words in length and it should be really complimentary and help tell people who you are. But do try to stay away from maybe being a little bit over the top or using hyperbole. So for instance, if you're gonna list that you're a global presenter, then you should probably have presented in at least three countries or more. Um, two countries, Australia and New Zealand, doesn't really sort of cut what we're after in terms of that. So be, um, be honest, uh, be complimentary about yourself and maybe even have someone else have a read over an editor before you submit. We need a headshot of you. This should be high resolution. I put there professional, but it doesn't mean that it has to be taken by a professional photographer. It just needs to be professional in appearance. So think carefully about the clothing that you're wearing and the image that you wanna put forward. If you're submitting a session to go perhaps in the business strand and it's a lecture session, then it might be more appropriate for you to be dressed a little bit more professionally. Whereas if you're putting forward a session to go in uh, a mind body type strand or a PT prac, then it's probably suitable to see you in more like a polo or a t-shirt or, or a singlet, something like that. Um, also think about the image that you're putting forward to represent your brand. So try to keep it classy. Qualifications, there's a section where we'll get you to list your qualifications. We only really need to know the ones that are most relevant to Phylex and your work in the fitness industry. So if you have, for instance, a certificate three in hairdressing, at this point, we don't really need to know about that. But if you have a cert for in fitness or a degree in something relevant, then feel free to put as many of those qualifications down as you'd like. And then finally, this is an important, really, really important piece for us, particularly if you're a first time presenter. We need to see a video of you presenting. And this could be just presenting to a bunch of fellow PTs or some colleagues, or it could be some, uh, some clients of yours, but they should be real humans. Two, three, four um, would be the minimum somewhere around there, uh, because we want to see how you present content to real life humans, not just talking, uh, talking head to camera. The exemption of this is if you've presented in Phylex 2016, Phylex 2017, Wayfic 2016, or QFIC 2016. They're all network events. And so if you've presented at any of those, then we already know what you're like as a presenter. So you don't need to submit the video. But if you are a first time presenter or you haven't presented for us since prior to 2016, then we do need you to submit a, a short video. All right, now I'm just gonna check back in on the chat here for a second, just to make sure that 
I'm not missing anything. Oh, I've got a couple of people saying, Colleen, can you still see and hear me okay? Everyone else looks to be okay. Yep, you're in there. Fantastic. Okay, here we go. So, session title. For each session that you put forward, we're going to need to see uh, a few things come through to us. Your session title should be original and eye-catching. This is something that's going to help to get people's attention and make them want to read onto your session description. A couple of things to think about. Avoid negatives. So we, we try to, to keep the, the language that we use as positive as possible. So for instance, instead of saying the five things you shouldn't do as a personal trainer, you might list you know uh, the, the five things that they should do instead or try to, to kind of frame that sentence in a way or that title in a way that makes it seem more positive and less like you're telling people off. Avoid trashy, trashy can't talk today, sorry guys. Avoid some trashy language and excessive use of fitness puns. We've heard Every fitness pun there is in the book, going from strength to strength, raising the bar, all of that kind of stuff. So, so try to avoid them where possible because we do sneak a few in and if we have too many, it starts, they start to kind of get lost. Uh, we potentially may decide to edit your title. If we do that, we'll run it past you first to make sure that you're okay with it. Uh, but sometimes it's just because the, it might be too long or maybe there's another session that's been submitted by someone else that might have a similar sounding title or our editor might just come up with a really catchy way to get across the message that you've got in your session. So either way, we'll make sure if it's edited that it's run past you before we go to print. So I've got two examples down the bottom there. The first one is an example of a great session title, The Art and Science of Glute Training. It tells people what they're going to learn. It tells them straight away what the topic is. It gives them a little bit of you know, curiosity. It's an art and a science, and it's still quite professional sounding. An example of something that we probably wouldn't accept uh, is big booty beat down. Um, and even though booty is, a, is a, like a term that's used quite commonly in the fitness industry, we do like to try to keep the feel and the tone of, uh, of Phylex sessions um, prof as professional as we can. It still can be casual, but we do like to try to keep things professional. So maybe no big booty beat down, thanks. <laughs> okay, session descriptions next. This is the, it's essentially your pitch. It's your sales pitch, not just to us in terms of looking at putting the program together and whether your session is selected, but it's also what's used in marketing and it's how our session, it's how our, our Phylex delegates will decide whether or not they want to attend your session. I've given you an example there of one from this year from Rich Scrivener. If this is a fantastic um, session description, it's really well written. It tells people exactly what they can expect, what they're going to walk away with, and also gets a little bit of their attention. It's got a question there at the beginning uh, that makes people think a little bit about it. So something along these lines works really well. Um, the session description length is usually about 60 to 80 words. Somewhere around there is perfect. Again, we'll likely edit these if we feel like they need a little bit of editing, but the better this can be written from the beginning, then the, the more attention you're going to get for us straight out of the gate. Uh, a really poorly written session description can be the difference between a phenomenal presenter or a phenomenal concept just not making it to round two of our, of our application selection process. Uh, and a great session description can get something um, to, to get a little bit more attention from us um, than it otherwise would have, even if the topic might not ever necessarily be as compelling. So consider uh, your session description is really important. Your session outline. This is something that we use internally at Network, and this is really just to help us understand what your session is about. It does show to us that you've had to think about how you're going to deliver the session and what the concepts will be, and it essentially is just like a breakdown. So the example I've given you there just would show you, you know, roughly how I would use the time in a session. Um, let's say I was calling this session Alicia's XYZ Kids Protocol, uh, then I'm just showing you I'd break it down based on topic introduction, the background behind the program, uh, developmental stages, motor school development. So it just kind of shows you exactly how I'd, uh, how I'd plan to, to deliver that session. Um, and again, internal use only. So you don't need to worry too much about fancy language or selling the concept. It's really just to let us know how you plan to use the time. Equipment. This is something that is always uh, a, a, a challenge. You know, it's really important that we have fantastic equipment at Filex, but it can be a real challenge for us to source 
the ratios that we need, particularly in sessions where there might be up to 100 people. So sessions that are limited with equipment are best. Uh, if you put forward a session that asks for 15 different pieces of equipment at a ratio of one to one, meaning one item for every one uh, delegate that attends your session, and your session has 100 people in it as a capacity, that's gonna be a real challenge for us. Um, obscure and onerous requests of equipment. So that kind of follows on from, from the point before. But if you've got something that's a little bit obscure, maybe it's a, a brand new piece of equipment that's not currently found in particularly um, common gym environments, it can be really tricky for us to source it. So in that situation, we'll, I, we may either ask you to help us find a supplier or we might ask you to even provide the equipment yourself. So when you're submitting your sessions, it's really good to have a think about um, you know, what you actually really need uh, and try to keep it to, you know, to what's only mandatory for you. Try to be flexible as well. We might come back to you and say, we can't get X particular piece of equipment, but we've got this type of, of, um, of supplementary material. So you might want to submit a session that's based on Olympic lifting and you've requested an Olympic bar for every delegate. That won't be possible. We can probably get a handful of them, one, two or three, but then we we might come back to you and say, you know, that for the delegates, we'll provide you with dowel rods. So remember that the idea of this session is not to give the delegates a workout, it's to help them understand the education and the application of the concepts that you're delivering. So where you can be flexible with equipment, we really do appreciate that. It makes our jobs a lot easier and also means that sometimes we can put sessions in that we otherwise wouldn't be able to based on equipment. Behind the scenes, there's a lot going on. We've got sometimes around 160 event crew. Uh, we've got a room dedicated to equipment and there are moves going on all, all day long, all day long across all parts of the convention center. It's a real challenge for us to get everything where it needs to be in the right numbers, um, you know, in a timely manner. So we just do appreciate you understand the, 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 I guess the size of the logistics and the scope of the logistics of what happens, you know, what happens behind the scenes to get the equipment to each of the rooms really is no small task. So the more helpful um, you guys can be with us and more flexible than the easier that is. And also supplies. We have a number of suppliers that are providing equipment to us. We really appreciate their help and support. If you have a supplier that you can connect us with that you know that would be happy to have their brand um, ex you know, promoted at Filex and have some exposure of a product that they distribute, then we're always happy to hear from you and from them as well. So feel free to put us in touch wherever you can. All right, I'm just gonna pop back one more time and just check that everyone's going all right so far. Good, fantastic. No one's commenting and saying you can't hear me or see me, so I think we are good to keep going. All right, remuneration. If you've not presented at Filex before, think of your first Filex as stage two of your interview process. Stage one is the application process. Stage two is us seeing how you go at your first Filex and seeing the feedback that we that we get. Um, with that in mind, first time presenters are paid a nominal fee as a thank you. Um, typically, it's somewhere around $125 to $150 for a session. If you're doing a joint presentation where you're co-presenting with someone else, then whatever the session fee is usually split into between you. Travel and accommodation is not covered for you unless you're a presenter that we have specifically reached out to and requested that you, uh, that you present at Filex. And even then some presenters still won't have travel and accommodation covered uh, unless it's under a special circumstance. So you could consider that our, the people that we would refer to as our headliners or our draw cards. They're the big name presenters that um, are the ones that really get people in. They're the people that you would want to go and see the conference as your number one presenter. And because we do have so many presenters coming from all corners of the world, unfortunately we can't afford to cover travel accommodation for everyone. We would if we could, but we just can't. Um, so do consider that if you apply and you're coming in from interstate, then you would need to be willing to cover the cost of your travel and accommodation, unless it's a special situation or you've got sponsorship. You'll receive a complimentary pass, so it means when you're not presenting, you can go to whichever sessions in, in the, the main three-day Filex program as you like, and you'll also be offered discounted access to any additional events. So if you wanted to go to, say, the PT Breakfast or the Business Summit or any of the pre-cons, then where possible, we'll give you a discounted rate to access those. We'll notify you those close to the time once you're selected. You'll also get an invitation to come along to our VIP and presenter drinks function on the Saturday night. It's a phenomenal chance for you to be rubbing shoulders with all of the presenters, all of the big name presenters, all the domestic presenters, uh, as well as key industry people 
uh, suppliers, sponsors, um, and, and other people that, um, that are invited along. If you'd like to bring someone with you, you're welcome to do that. There is a cost for additional tickets. It's usually somewhere in the vicinity of around $50 or $60 a head um, to help cover the cost of, of food and drink that's supplied. And it's a fantastic night, so it's a really great chance for you to, to mingle and get to know our fellow presenters as well. Sponsorship. So there are a couple of options for sponsorship. You could choose to sponsor yourself. So if you have a brand that you're representing, your own brand that you're representing and you would like to sponsor yourself, what that means is that you would cover the cost of your attendance and presenting at Filex and in exchange your logo and your brand is attached to that particular session. So you have the opportunity to put a pull-up banner in your session. We'll also provide a, a logo, a sponsor logo that would be inside your session. Your logo will be attached to the website and any print media that we do that's relevant to, to your session, your logo will be attached there as well. There are much bigger sponsorship opportunities available where you could become an event partner or an event sponsor. So if that's something that you're interested in knowing more about, you can just shoot me an email and then I can connect you with Ryan who looks after our sponsorship. Uh, investment. So the investment for sponsorship, as I mentioned, really is just covering the cost of you as a presenter for one or more of your sessions. But if you're looking for a larger level of sponsorship, then there is actually um, a sponsor fee and that just helps to go towards offsetting the cost of the event. An event of this size is phenomenally expensive. For instance, you know, just for us to be able to run the event at the ICC in Sydney, we're looking at in the vicinity of half a million dollars in venue hire alone. So when you factor in that plus all the presenter fees, travel and accommodation, staffing costs, and just the expense, that, sheer expense that goes into an event of this size, um, you know, the, the more sponsorship that we can get our hands on, the better the event is for everyone. The return, as I mentioned, is, the, is uh, not only the exposure, you'll also have the opportunity to have a representative come and do a room host introduction for you. So room hosting is, uh, if, in case you're not familiar with it, is where we have someone come along and introduce uh, a speaker at the beginning of their session. So if it's representative from a sponsor brand, then they're quite um, welcome to mention a little bit about what the sponsor company is or does. Uh, and then at the end of the session, you're welcome to collect any delegate data from anyone that wants to pop their details down. Additionally, at the end of the event, where we have permission for any people that opt in at the point of registration, we're more than happy to share that delegate data with you, but we can only do so for people that have chosen to have their, their data released to sponsors. And finally, uh, under the kind of the heading of sponsorship is it's really important to make sure that your session is not a sales pitch. Uh, a sponsored session can obviously uh, expose the brand or the product in the ways that I've already mentioned, but the session itself should be educational in nature. We're not a, a sales pitch type of event. And in fact, anyone that does do any kind of sales pitch is typically not invited back to Filex. We're really adamant about that. We want this event to be the utmost professional, you know, educationally sound, valuable experience for our delegates. And unfortunately, sales pitches often turn people away. So it's really important to make sure that you stick to that. Outcomes. So it's a huge process. I really can't uh, emphasize enough the amount of time that goes into putting together the Filex program. It's not just a case of picking sessions that we think look great. It's also a case of juggling it. It's really it is a jigsaw puzzles the only way I can describe it. We have to do draft after draft after draft of the program to put the right mix of people, presenters, topics. We've got to make sure that equipment used in one session isn't going to be used in another session in the same time slot. There's a lot of backwards and forwards. It takes us a really long time to get the final program together. Um, so just be understanding of the fact that if you submit something to us in the next month, it's very likely that you won't hear back before the end of October, but we promise we'll let you know what the outcome of your application is, regardless of whether it's successful or unsuccessful. The right mix just refers to the fact that, um, you know, we can't have 10 people doing the same session um, or the same topic area. We might put two or three variations of glute training or two or three variations of shoulder injury rehab, anything that's a really popular topic that has different approaches, we'll definitely put that in where we can. But sometimes it just comes down to the fact that we have too many people submitting a similar topic area and it just means that we can't take everyone. We would love to, but we just can't. 
So what happens if you're unsuccessful? If you're unsuccessful, we'll let you know, and it, please don't take that as, uh, you know, that we don't want you to apply again. Sometimes we've had presenters apply four, five, six years in a row and still not be successful until the seventh year. So don't give up, do keep going. Just due to the sheer volume of applications that we get, we often can't give you individualised feedback on your presentation um, skills or your submission. Um, please do be professional. If you get an unsuccessful result, you know, we've had some times where we've been uh, accused of cronyism or nepotism or, you know, that you've got to take the right people out to dinner to get selected to Filex. I cannot emphasise enough how far from the truth that honestly is. We really do pride ourselves on giving every single application, uh, you know, the we do its due, we do our due diligence on it. We really make sure that we spend the time to, to, to judge every application on its merit with even the most seasoned presenters who have presented for us year on year, sometimes being turned down because the sessions that they put forward for that particular year just didn't feel like they fit the standard or you know the, um, the quality that we were after. We also do like to highlight the fact that we sometimes rest seasoned or draw card presenters purely because we can't fit everyone into the program. And if we had every single presenter present year on year, it would be the same program, which would be quite boring for the delegates. So, um, you know, please don't feel like if you're not successful this year that you couldn't apply again. You absolutely can, and I highly encourage you to do so. Um, your applications typically get better and better, so uh, so keep at it if you, don't get, uh, if you don't get accepted this year. And what if you are successful? Well, the first thing that will happen is we'll reach out to you towards the end of October, or maybe even sooner if we know earlier on that you're definitely in, um, and you'll hear from either Network or TAS. So TAS just refers to the Association Specialists. They're an event management company that we've contracted to work with us to help pull the event together, and you'll have a lot of contact from Peter and her team at TAS uh, in the lead up to the event. The communication that you get from us, we do try to keep it as streamlined as possible, not inundating you with emails every week, but there are a number of key points of contact for us through the year from October to April. And it's really helpful if you can get onto those quickly um, and efficiently. So things that will come to you, you can expect to receive a presenter agreement that includes a waiver. You'll need to sign that and send it back to us. It's usually done uh, via DocuSign, which is an electronic um, contract uh, system or software that we use. You'll note that it's quite long and we do recommend that you read all of it because it contains some really important information on things such as conditions and restrictions on trade. So for instance, we do request that you don't uh, present the same session material in New South Wales or preferably in Australia where possible, within a couple of months either side of the event, preferably before, most importantly before. Um, we just want to try to make sure that delegates are getting access to the most cutting edge information and session presentations that we can. And if your session has been presented three different places in New South Wales the month before, then you know that obviously makes it really tricky for us to be able to invite you back in future. If you've got a question or you're not sure if maybe what you've got planned might contravene a restriction on trade, then just send us an email and we can look into it and work with you. More often than not, there's no problem. It's just really about being specific uh, about the sessions that you present. Session notes. We do request session notes to be submitted uh, roughly about six to eight weeks before Filex. These session notes are typically in the form of a handout from your PowerPoint slide. They can be written notes. Uh, if the session notes aren't submitted to us by the due date, which we'll notify you of closer to the time, then any session notes that you provide would need to be photocopied and brought on site by you. We don't accept session notes late and we don't have facilities available to print them. Equipment and AV request forms. This is where you get to tell us just to confirm what you put into your application, if there's been any changes or anything that we need to know about. We do request that whatever you submit to us in your application is adhered to as strictly as possible. What I mean by that is let's say that you submitted a session asking for two kettlebells per person, and then come February or March, you say that you want to change the kettlebells to dumbbells. That makes it really tricky for us because we've quite often already sought out equipment from our suppliers based on what you've presented. And your session is often selected based on our ability to meet the equipment requirements. So we do request that you don't make any significant changes or that you, you talk to us as soon as possible uh, to find out if there is uh, anything that can be done if you do need to change equipment. 
And then often there's just other bits and pieces. We might email you about our VIP drinks and uh, request an RSVP from you, or there just might be some things that we want to check, such as what your equipment is that you've, that you've requested or, or you know, any other number of different things that we might need to talk to you about. So where possible, please get back to us as quickly as you possibly can. We'll always do the same as well. Um, but the, the easier the, the process of communication is uh, for you and for us, then the more successful the event can be as well. All right, so now I'm going to go back to you guys and get rid of my screen. How do I do that? Here we go. Okay, so you've listened to me ramble for a while. Over in the chat box, feel free to let me know if you've got any questions. Um, I did aim to have us wrapped up by 2.45 roughly, so we've got about 10 minutes, but I'll stay online as long as we have questions going for. So feel free to type anything that you've got into the chat box. In the meantime, if you've got questions that come up um, after the chat is over, I'm going to have this video online for you guys to watch. We should have that up within the week and I'll send you all an email so that you know where to find it. You can also send me an email. Uh, at alicia.smith at fitnessnetwork.com.au. If you're here today, that means that you have my email address. I sent you the email this morning. Um, but hopefully that should answer most of the questions. Let's have a look if anyone's got anything that they want to ask. All right, Susie's got a question. Let's have a look. Susie, do you still have a question? I can't see your text for some reason. Let's have a look. whether you could use a podcast for your video. Let me bring you up. I'm going to invite you on screen and we'll see if we can, if we can get you there. Let's see. All right, so Susie, if the question is, can you use a podcast instead of your video? The answer is actually no, unfortunately. We need to see uh, a video. We need to kind of see you in an environment that would be uh, most similar to Filex. So um, we do need to have a video. Ah, oh, here she is just popping up on screen now. Susie, hi. hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I just had a... Great. So was that the question? Yeah, I just remembered that I did a podcast with Nadia like two years ago and I was like, oh, wait, hang on. That's kind of quite relevant. But would it be able to, would I be able to like submit that on top of um, a presentation? Because yeah. it's quite strong content, but I won't be able to recreate yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're thinking that you would like to submit it as part of your application, then there'll be places where you can do things like put in... Um, uh, you know, podcasts, Facebooks, like link to social media, YouTube channels, all of that kind of thing. So it's totally fine. You can absolutely submit that. There'll be a, like a text box where you can just put in whatever links you think are relevant to us. Yeah. Uh, but we would still need to see a video just so that we can see your presenting skills in a, an environment where it's rather than talking to a person, you're presenting to an audience. Okay, sure. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Susie. Thank you. Bye. All right, guys, any other questions? If not, I'll just wrap it up. And then, as I mentioned, if you need to get in touch with me, you're welcome to do so. Looks like that's it for questions. All right. Thanks, Brooke. Thanks, Eleni. Thanks, Simon. All right, guys, I'll leave you to it. Thanks so much for joining me. Again, shoot me an email if you've got questions. Alicia.smith at fitnessnetwork.com.au. Look forward to seeing loads of applications um, coming in really soon. So keep an eye out. We'll make sure that we email you all as soon as the applications are open, roughly 1st of June. Thanks. See you soon.